Today we get to talk about probability. So probability measures how likely it is for an event to occur. It is always a number between 0 and 1. 0 would be an impossible event. It's the probability of cats and dogs falling from the sky. 0. And 1, a certain event. What's the probability the sun will rise every day? 1. Okay. Keep in mind that 1 can be written, that number between 0 and 1 can be written as a fraction, a decimal, or a percent. So 1 as a fraction or decimal looks like 1, but as a percent is of course 100 percent. Okay, now we have two different probabilities we're going to discuss. One is an experimental probability, and that would be the one that's based on an experiment. Okay, or observation of the number of trials, okay? And so your experimental probability of an event happening is the actual number of times an event, the event that you're looking for occurs over the total number of trials. So look at our batting problem. Our softball player got a hit in 20 of her last 50 times at bat. What is the experimental probability that she will get a hit at her next bat? So we're looking for the probability of a hit, and that is the number of times that she's gotten a hit over the total number of times she was at bat. So that probability reduces to 2 over 5. Again, you can leave it as a fraction, you can write it as a decimal, or you can change that to a percent, whatever you like. Okay, now take that in contrast to theoretical probability. Theoretical probability is when we have a sample space of n outcomes. Okay, if you want to think about the batter. Okay, when she gets up to bat, how many different possibilities can happen? She can either get a hit or not a hit. So how many outcomes are in our sample space? The outcomes are hit or no hit. Okay, and our event is actually a hit. So the theoretical probability is always the number of outcomes, possible outcome, or the favorable outcome over the possible outcomes, M over N. So in our baseball or softball problem, your theoretical probability is, is going to be 1 out of 2 because she either gets a hit or not a hit, and one of them is a hit. So 1 half or 50%. So just so that you can kind of see the difference between the two of them. Um, here is another example. Uh, what's the theoretical probability of getting a sum that is an odd number on one roll of standard 2 two standard number cubes, okay? Now, here's a chart that makes it easy to find, but in case you don't have a chart, if you start listing them in order, uh, if I roll a 1 and a 2, a 1 and a 4, a 1 and a 6, each of those gives me an odd number. That's if my first die is a 1, and that's the second die. And then if I rolled a 2, I could get a 3, or I could get a 5, so I'm listing all the different ways it can happen, and that's if I don't have this chart, okay? Uh, if I got a 3, 3 plus 4, and 3 plus 6, and then if I got a 4, I would get a 5, and if I got a 5, I would get a 6. So each time I was going up, and then of course, you've got all of these possibilities and that's rolling a 1 on the first die. Well, what if I... So a 1 and a 2 would be a 1 on the first die and a 2 on the second die. Well, what if I get a 2 on the first die and a 1 on the second die? So if you think about these possible outcomes, then you have it times 2 because they can all be flipped. Or you can go to your chart. Like I said, you can also see it on a chart. But if you count up all of the odds, then you will find out also that you have 18 of them, but I wanted to work it out so that you would know how to do it if you did not have your chart. 
So I've got all the odd numbers. Oops, missed that one. Doing a little too fast. Nine, and then I have two 11s. So 18 out of a possible 36 gives me a uh, fraction of one half or 50%. Okay, now the next thing we have is to talk about something called combinatorics. And combinatorics basically is used to, we use it to find theoretical probability because that's easier than listing and counting all the equally likely outcomes. So combinatorics includes the fundamental counting principle that we've talked about earlier and ways to count permutations and combinations. So one thing that you need to be aware of uh, in probability problems is that you will be expected to know some common information. Um, we deal a lot with cards, so hopefully you know that, let me go put that in a different one. But there are 52 cards in a deck and that we have four suits and those suits are um, we have diamonds we have hearts we have clubs and we have spades so these are the things that you'll be expected to know. Hopefully you also know that these two suits are black and these two suits are red. And then the other thing is knowing that the cards go from, we have 0 to 10, and then we have, I'm sorry, we don't have 0 to 10. I'm thinking of digits. We have ace to 10, and then we have jack, queen, and king. So there are 13 cards in each suit. 13 times 4, uh, make your 52 cards in the deck. So they want to know what the theoretical probability of being dealt all four sevens in a five-card hand. So I am looking for that probability of getting a hand with four sevens. So what you have to think about is all the different ways to get four sevens okay and hopefully you know that it I don't care if I'm dealt five cards I don't care if the first four are seven the last four are seven so the order that I get those cards doesn't matter which is why we're dealing with combinations I have four sevens I want all four of them okay and then if I've taken out four cards out of a 52 card deck then I have 48 cards left and I need one of them to make a hand. So this first number is what has given me the total number of cards in the deck and the last number is telling me how many cards are in my hand. Okay, it's just a way to check yourself. And then of course the bottom is how many different hands do I have in a 52 card deck. So we calculate each of those. The combination of four things taken four at a time is one. The combination of 48 things taken one at a time is 48. And that we punch in our calculator and we get 2, 5, 9, 8, 9, 6, 0. You would simplify that fraction or if you want to make it a decimal, that would be 1, 2, 3, 4. Now some people's calculator puts that in as 0.185. E to, e to the negative 4. So that's scientific notation. I'm sorry, that's not percent, y'all. That's just the decimal. Okay? Um, so if your calculator might do 0.185 e to the negative 4, that's what that number is right there. Okay? So that's the decimal number, or the percent number would be 0 0.00185%. Now the last method that of uh, probability that we want to talk about is uh, what we refer to as the geometric probability because we use the area. 
So sometimes areas are used to find theoretical probability. As I said, this is referred to sometimes as geometric probability. So the example that we have is, suppose we have a batter strike zone. And I found out in class today that I had to talk about the strike zone. So I drew a very um, bad sketch of a batter. And when the batter comes up to bat, he has a bat in his hand and he's standing over home plate. And what he has is a strike zone that the pitcher has to throw the ball in. And if it's not in that zone, the zone being even with home plate and usually between his knees and shoulders, so mine's a little high there, um, he's got to be in that zone for it to be called a strike. And then we have a high inside strike zone that's up here. So basically we're trying to find the probability that the pitcher gets it into that spot. So we're using area, so to find the area of the smaller rectangle, I got 3 times 5 over the area of the bigger rectangle, 15 times 20, and we simplify that. That's 15 right there. So this becomes 1 over 20 or 5%. So it's not, not very high. Okay, and that answer is that's the probability that a baseball thrown at random within the strike zone will be high inside, a high inside strike. Okay, so I have four more problems to do. If you want to pause, read the problems, then you can play it back and make sure that you are doing things correctly before you start on your assignment. What's the experimental probability of a quarterback will compete his next pass if he completed 30 of the last 40 passes? That's the key right there is experimental. So I'm going to take the number of favorable over the total number of passes. So that, of course, becomes 3 fourths or 75%. I'm going to leave it. I don't want to do the extra work. Okay? So go ahead and leave it as your fraction. Again, experimental probability. So he completed 36 of his passes out of 45 and that reduces to 4 out of 5 or 80 percent. Now we have a theoretical probability which means I don't have an experiment happening and I just have to figure out on a standard number cube I got six sides and how many of those sides have a three on them? One. So it's one sixth. Okay again I have six sides how many of those sides have a 2 or a 4? Well, that would be 2 of the numbers, and that reduces to 1 third. So there you have probability. Keep in mind that all the events, all the problems that we talked about today deal with just one event. Tomorrow we'll get into multiple events.